Hello again, everyone. We are back. Uh, this time, we will be speaking to you about Stadium Wi-Fi. Very quickly, just cover who we are again for the cameras. Uh, Matt and Mac, Wireless Project Engineers for Nintidic. And you can also know us as Wi-Fi Ninjas, Podcast and Blog. So a bit like Andrew McHale's presentation, 10 minute presentation yesterday, we're going to give you 10 tips on Stadium Wi-Fi in 10 minutes. First tip, the back on LAN is crucial that you get this right because even if you do the most perfect spotless RF design and configuration, if this isn't right, it's the wireless that's going to get the blame as always. So do some simple calculations of X amount of users you're expecting to have in the stadium versus X amount of data you expect them to be traversing. Also make sure that the LAN is going to be able to support the amount of IP addresses that you're going to be seeing, the uh, amount of DHCP requests, and also your DNS servers are going to be able to handle the amount of queries per second. And the next tip is uh, capacity. So capacity, we are talking about the uh, capacity from the Wi-Fi perspective. So how many users during the game will really connect to your Wi-Fi network. So statistically, around 60 to 70 percent of users will connect to the Wi-Fi network during the game, and they will connect just one uh, device. So for every 100 users, when you think about 60, 70 users connecting to your Wi-Fi, that's what you will have in mind while scoping the capacity and designing for it. Okay, uh, let's move on to mounting. There's a few different options when it comes to stadium Wi-Fi mounting. Uh, usually, you want to try and aim from shooting from above. Uh, sometimes people will shoot from behind or sometimes people will use rails or there are options in some cases that you can do under seat mounting. Um, but we, what we recommend is that you go around on what we call a, a pen and paper survey. So that could be when you go around with like an iPad and the floor plan and you uh, really start to get a feel for the floor plan and for the stadium and you start to look at the infrastructure and think, oh, where would I like to mount access points? Um, where am I going to put the antennas to be aiming at the different amounts of seats for people? Um, and then we think that's really important because it plays into our next tip. Uh, which now covers around the cabling. Yeah. And that's very important to engage the facility guys, uh, knowing the stadium inside out as early as possible. Because really what we want to avoid here is a situation where we've spent weeks or months designing the Wi-Fi network for a stadium. And you know, it's a very time consuming process because you have hundreds of access points, if not, if not more. And all these access points, they're mounted in uh, weird, not accessible locations. Sometimes they are like, you know, 20 meters above the ground. Sometimes they are like hidden in the infrastructure. So you might spend this time designing your perfect Wi-Fi network, hand it over to facilities, and then they will come back, oh, sorry, Mike, but by the way, 90% of your perfect access points locations, they are not practical from our perspective, so you have to do your design again. So the tip from here is engage the facilities as early as possible during your pen and paper survey. Yep. Uh, so that leads us on to our, our next tip. Um, depending on which vendor you're going with, uh, access points, usually the vendors will have a best in class access point or even like a professional version which is aimed for stadiums. Now we recommend that you go for the best in class possible because these access points are going to have better silicon inside it, better chipsets. They're going to be able to handle the capacity, the amount of clients that are going to be going through it a lot better than potentially some of the entry or mid-level access points. <coughs> Yeah, and a very important point, the antennas. So with Wi-Fi Stadium, you have to really be extremely focused on efficiency, reusing the RF spectrum, uh, making the CCI, or CCC, whatever we call it, um, as minimized as possible. We don't want to cover entire you know, stadium with every access point. We want to only cater for very limited locations, small areas with the users, while having on mind the capacity that we want to achieve. So normally we would use the high gain directional antennas, like try to imagine antennas shooting from above, shooting down, creating like a beautiful cone of coverage, uh, focusing on users underneath them, but without creating too much contention. So sector antennas, patch antennas, some vendors, they have dedicated stadium antennas, which probably would be a good idea to use here. Okay. Uh, this takes on to our next tip, the RF tuning. Um, if you start with 5 gigahertz here, we recommend that you use the full 5 gigahertz spectrum available to you, even if you are in an area that is affected by DFS. A bit controversial, but the performance gain you get from using the additional frequency space versus the potential hit of a DFS event during a game 
it will outweighs that, we think. So we recommend you use all the five gigahertz spectrum as possible to you wherever you are in the world. Uh, and then make sure that you tune like your uh, transmit power levels so we're not using the defaults like minimum and maximum like max said we want to be aiming at certain sets, sets of seats so we want to try and control that rf with our um, power levels uh, make sure the data rates are not left on the minimum minimum data rates so we recommend that you tune them up a bit as well so people need to be closer to the access point or antenna to be able to connect um, another thing for the rf tuning for you guys to think about here is 2.4 it's not dead, you can still use it, but careful planning, is it gonna be a big open space? We will need to turn off some of them radios, but with it being a stadium, and the fact there's gonna be tens of thousands of clients coming along to the stadium potentially, that there's gonna be some 2.4 clients, and we can use some of them 2.4 radios to get them on the network. Um, so yeah, we recommend that you still use the 2.4, but very careful planning. Yeah, and if you're using ROM, let's tweak it, as many of the guys during this yeah. conference have mentioned. Yeah, plenty of tips on that already. <laughs> okay, and then security and, and rogue APs. So how do you secure your stadium Wi-Fi? And, and that's another controversial topic, but thumbs up rule is make it as simple as possible, as robust as possible, as basic as possible. So if you can get away without using uh, splash pages, it's probably a way to go. Open, open, quickly connect the users without wasting the airtime is probably preferred. If, however, your InfoSec team is very serious about displaying the terms of conditions and is required by law, then keep your splash page very simple, very light, uh, quick to load, uh, but if possible, don't use it at all. And the rogue access points, you have your VIP booths, you have your uh, media areas, and some of them, they will probably want to put their own access points on top of your infrastructure. It's not a good idea. So the goal is here to use your own network that you have ultimate control over it and um, without adding any more contention. Uh, so rate limiting, we never recommend that you rate limit anyway, but especially not when it comes to stadium Wi-Fi. The whole point here is we want to get people on and off the network as fast as possible. So um, we did a very good podcast with Jim Palmer quite recently where he speaks about that famous airport that no one knows where he works at. <laughs> um, and he talked us through when they enabled rate limiting on the airport Wi-Fi and what that did to not only like the channel utilization but the bandwidth utilization, how they nearly maxed out their pipe. So um, if you want to know a little bit more on that, maybe head back to our podcast with Jim and it'll give you some more information, but do not enable rate limiting at your stadium. And last but not least is the analytics assurance monitoring of the Wi-Fi network during the game. So you might have spent weeks designing your perfect Wi-Fi network and in your head it works perfectly, but you won't know until the game happens. So it's very crucial and important to know exactly what is happening during the game, of course. So what you want to, to focus on is the load of your network. Is your pipe being overutilized? How many clients per access point are associated? Is the spread between the access points fairly equal? If not, is there anything that we can do about it? Uh, what is the uh, channel utilization of the access points? Uh, if you have a good um, split between 2.4 and five gigahertz are all the associations successful if not what happens is everyone affected it's just a couple of devices affected are all the areas um, served by the access point or access points are green maybe are some some of them they are they are down you really want to to see all the statistics and they would help you to make educated decisions during the game which might improve the quality of the Wi-Fi network that you are giving to your customers. So analytics is important. And normally you probably wouldn't rely on something too heavy. So what we've seen is that people, they are tweaking their analytics tools to just you know, give them a very simple, easy to grasp view of the network because you normally you won't have time during the game to, to do a deep dive into troubleshooting into what is happening. So we probably want to just have a glance at the network, understand what's happening, understand the load, and then make the decisions based on that. Okay? Hey, we did it. 10 tips in 10 minutes. So thank you, guys. If you enjoyed that, we've got a longer podcast recorded actually George's in episode number six where we dive in a little bit deeper. But yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.